Hello, everybody. Welcome to another poetry reading. Everyone's favorite. Today we are doing, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm forgetting some, somebody, the most recent poet as of yet. Um, she's only, she passed away about six years ago. And I'm pretty sure she's the only poet I've done so far that was still alive when I was born back in 95. Anyway, uh, we're doing Maya Angelou. I may be pronouncing that wrong. Angelou? I don't know. I'm going to say Maya Angelou. Anyway, so with that out of the way, uh, let's just jump in to the first poem. Awakening in New York Curtains forcing their will against the wind Children sleep Exchanging dreams with seraphim The city drags itself awake on subway straps And I, an alarm Awake as a rumor of war Lie stretching into dawn Unasked and unheeded Caged Bird a free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still, and his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze, and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees, and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn, and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. California Prodigal The eye follows, the land slips upward, creases down, forms the gentle buttocks of a young giant. In the nestle, old abode bricks washed of whiteness, pale to umber, await another century. Star jasmine and old vines lay claim upon the ghosted land, then quiet pools whisper, private childhood secrets, flush on inner cottage walls, antiquitous faces, used to the gelid breath of old manners, flare disdainfully over breached time. Around and through these cold phantasmatalities, he walks, insisting to the languid air, activity, music, a generosity of graces. His lupin fields spurn old deceit and agile poppies dance in golden riot. Each day is fulminant, exploding brightly under the gaze of his exquisite sires, frozen in the famed paint of dead masters. Audacious sunlight casts defiance at their feet. Kin we were entwined in red rings of blood and loneliness before the first snows fell, before muddy rivers seeded clouds above a virgin forest, and men ran naked, blue and black skinned, into the warm embraces of Shiva, Eve, and Lilith. I was your sister. You left me to force strangers into brother molds, exacting taxations they never owed or could ever pay. You fought to die. Thinking in destruction lies the seed of birth. You may be right. I will remember silent walks in southern woods and long talks and low voices, 
shielding meaning from the big ears of over-curious adults. You may be right. Your slow return from regions of terror and bloody screams races my heart. I hear again the laughter of children and see fireflies bursting tiny explosions in an Arkansas twilight. The Mothering Blackness She came home running, back to the mothering blackness, deep in the smothering blackness, white tears icicle gold planes of her face. She came home running. She came down creeping, here to the black arms waiting, now to the warm heart waiting. Rhyme of alien dreams befrosts her rich brown face. She came down creeping. She came home blameless, black yet as Hagar's daughter, tall as was Sheba's daughter. Threats of northern winds die on the desert's face. She came home blameless. On the pulse of morning, a rock, a river, a tree, hosts to species long since departed, marked the mastodon, the dinosaur, who left dried tokens of their sojourn here on our planet floor. Any broad alarm of their hastening doom is lost in the gloom of dust and ages. But today, the rock cries out to us, clearly, forcefully, come. You may stand upon my back and face your distant destiny, but seek no heaven in my shadow. I will give you no hiding place down here. You, created only a little lower than the angels, have crouched too long in the bruising darkness, have lain too long face down in ignorance, your mouth spilling words armed for slaughter. The rock cries out to us today, you may stand upon me, but do not hide your face. Phenomenal Woman Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model's size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellows stand or fall down to their knees, then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the right of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Cause I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. A Plagued Journey There is no warning rattle at the door, nor heavy feet to stomp the foyer boards. Safe in the dark prison, I know that light slides over the fingered works of a toothless woman in Pakistan. Happy prints of an invisible time are illumined. My mouth agape rejects the solid air and lungs hold. The invader takes direction and seeps through the plaster walls. It is at my chamber, entering the keyhole, pushing through the padding of the door. I cannot scream. A bone of fear clogs my throat. It is upon me. It is sunrise, with hope its arrogant rider. My mind, formerly quiescent in its snug encasement, is strained to look upon their rapturous visages, to let them enter even into me. I am forced outside myself to mount the light and ride, joined with hope. Through all the bright hours, I cling to expectation until darkness comes to reclaim me as its own. Hope fades, 
day is gone into its irredeemable place, and I am thrown back into the familiar bonds of disconsolation. Gloom crawls around, lapping lasciviously between my toes, at my ankles, and it sucks the strands of my hair. It forgives my heady fling with hope. I am joined again into its greedy arms. Alrighty. Well, that's all for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, as always, until next time, have a good day, good night, or whatever it is for you, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah.